Hey class, Jim here. Welcome to the spring of 2023 for Pre-Calculus Online, Math 144500. Let me walk you through a little navigation of the course. First off, we are in the course home right now, and as I post announcements, you will see them right here. I will click on this announcements tool here just so you can see what typical announcements are gonna look like. So, for example, when the week 14 announcement pops up, this is what it'll look like, and uh, it will give you an indication of what homework is due, what quizzes are due, and the discussions that are due for the week. Um, and then many of the weeks, I will also include a video message. So uh, I won't do this for every week, but you know, when there, especially if there's complicated topics, I'll put a little bit of instruction into these weekly video messages. I'll try to do most weeks. Sometimes I get a little busy and I can't do all of them, but I will do my best to do most of them. Uh, if you pop over to content, that's where you'll see a lot of the course documentation. So I'm gonna click on the Getting Started folder and underneath the Getting Started folder or module as they call them in uh, Desire to Learn, here's where you will see a sub-module. And this sub-module has the syllabus and schedule. So you can see the syllabus and schedule for our course right here. Another sub-module are course handouts. If we scroll down here, we'll see those course handouts. We are doing trig the first 10 weeks of the semester, so you will see some blank unit circles here. Uh, we'll stick to the 8 and the 12. The 24 is just kind of an anomaly. Uh, we will do uh, some work with the angles that are multiples of 15 degrees, but you're never really asked to fill out a blank 24 sector circle, although if you feel so inclined, you can. And this alternative note card where you're going to be taking exams in a proctored format and you're allowed to bring in a note card. The alternative note card is just an eight by 11 sheet of paper with two sides of a note card uh, designated on it. So if you wanna bring in a sheet of paper instead of a note card that you're flipping back and forth, totally fine to use this alternative note card. Up here is a lecture series on pre-calc that I gave in the classroom long ago. I've been teaching it purely online lately, so this has been a while ago, but some of you like to listen to full lectures. That's a decent place to go. And then the schedules for the math help centers will be posted here. I don't have, an up, have them updated yet because they're not all to me, but eventually I will get those updated as soon as they get shared with me. I will post those there. The next most important link will be under this My Lab Math. So there's a separate video walking you through My Lab Math or My Math Lab. Uh, those are equivalent, just different naming that has changed over the years. Uh, I'm not gonna click on that right now, or maybe I am gonna click on it. Um, but if I go over there, since the course hasn't started yet, you're not gonna see anything. So let me click on My Math Lab as an instructor, um, actually, I've already done this in a separate video, so I don't need to do it. You just need to know that under My Lab Math, this is where you will go. This is where you'll go to get to your assignments. The My Lab Math gradebook is right here, so all the work you do in My Math Lab will show up in this gradebook. Um, you can watch that separate video to get details. The next important module here is the course schedule for our 15-week course. So week one all the way through, uh, here we go with exam one, that's gonna be lined up in week five, so you'll have an exam, plus you'll have homework and quizzes for week five, new content, etc. all the way through. Here's exam two. Well, let me just point out a little bit with exam two. We have some funny business going on right in here. You'll notice that this is a 14-day span here and a 14-day span here, uh, and that's because the spring breaks this year are very misaligned. There is a week in between the Larimer spring break and the Westminster Boulder County spring break. So I've got content with two week windows here so that when you're on spring break, whether it's the first week or the third week of this three week block, um, you'll everyone will have an opportunity to take their break and then to do their work. So that's why there's a two week window here and a two week window for this stuff as well to accommodate for the spring breaks. All right, so that's kind of how it works. If you click on a single week, let's just come up here to week one. Over here on the right, you'll just have that one week blown out. So let's just look at an example week. So first week, 
we'll always have an image for the week. So here we have a unit circle with all the angles in both degrees and radians. There is the content for week one. You will have homework in my math lab, a homework for 6-1, a homework for 6-2, a quiz for 6-1, and a quiz for 6-2. The quizzes are quick and easy, five questions, and you get to take each quiz twice. Uh, the homework problems, you can do as many times as you need to get 100% uh, in your homework. Class introductions, if you click here, this is gonna open up the Padlet for the course. And if you double click on that background, you can put in a little bio, you can uh, put in a photo or a video, say whatever you wanna say, introduce yourself to the class so we can get to know each other. And let's see, so the next thing under, under this week one, there are some videos here. And so these videos and under each week, at least most of the weeks, I have some videos that I've made that uh, give you examples of how to do certain problems. So that's what you'll find right there. And then here are a list of the discussions for the week. Introductions, again, you just go into the Padlet. You won't have to do an introduction in the discussion board itself, but I do have a link to it there or there. Both of those take you to the same Padlet. Uh, and then we have our discussions. So the first thing we need to learn how to do is capture things. Many of you are pretty comfortable capturing things off of a website or out of a document or whatever. This gives you an introduction to the capture tool that I use, TechSmith Capture. It's a great little capture tool. If you use Windows, you know that there's a snipping tool. The nice thing about this capture tool is that you can annotate on top of your captured image, which is a really good way to call things out. If you have a question on something, you can do a capture and draw an arrow, put a box, do whatever. So it's a little bit more sophisticated than just the regular old snipping tool that's built into Windows. Uh, this is an equation editor overview. Uh, so built right into D2L is a decent equation editor. So here's a, a picture of something that's built with the equation editor. And this is just to get you to figure out how to use the templated model of, the, you know, of an equation inside this equation editor. Uh, so it gives you a very easy way to convey math. Pretty cool. The next one is on a graphing tool. The graphing tool I tend to use is a free piece of software called Desmos. It's, uh, it's a web-based piece of software. So you'll go to desmos.com and you can just start graphing. And it's got a built-in calculator also. So you can use it for, for more than just graphing. But this gives you an overview of that. So this first week, we have, we've got a bunch of these kind of get up to speed on technology discussions, uh, and then just one content discussion. So the one content discussion is this topic of angular velocity, and I've got two videos built in here. There is a typo in the second video right here, uh, where I wrote down a 250 instead of a 2,500, so keep that in mind. Um, and you'll just take one of the problems that you do in your homework uh, that's under this category an angular velocity problem and you will post your you'll post post a, an image of your work and then if i and then i can comment on it so my suggestion with all of these let's jump to another week that's more typical of the semester week one has all those extra things in it but here's week eight and there are two discussions. So typical week is gonna have two content discussions. So I've got a little bit of instruction here. I've got a video on, on an example that meets the criteria for this discussion. Uh, and then you post. You post a picture of your work and you know base your work on the way I've done it in the video. Um, and if you have any questions on it, you can just ask right there in the discussion. So that's a typical week in terms of what your responsibility responsibility is for discussions. Two problems that you've done in your homework. Um, and my suggestion is that you, I mean, you can just get by and do the easiest problem that fits in this category of law of cosines, or you can pick a harder one. You, you As long as you post something, you're going to get 100%. You're going to get the participation points for that discussion. But if you are looking for feedback, pick one of the more difficult problems, and that gives me an opportunity to give you feedback. If you pick an easy problem and you don't have any questions on it, then I mean, I'll give you your points and that's totally fine. But if you're trying to get some deeper understanding of it, pick a harder problem, ask, it, ask a question about the topic if you're not 100% locked in on it. You know, so you kind of get out what you put in. Uh, but my advice is to, you know, choose a hard problem. Let me do some teaching. 
So this uh, module over here, this is the how-to videos. This is where all the videos are that you saw in that week one group of discussions. This gives you an overview of the course. This is the overview of my math lab. So another, this is the one I'm actually building right this second. Um, here's the equation editor one. Here's the TechSmith capture. Here's the, oh, actually, let me stop on this one for a second. Here is the Desmos graphing one. And here is the cam scanner one. Let me get, I need to talk a little bit about these two. Okay, so inserting an image into a discussion. I do not want attachments. What we would like to see is any images that need to be shared, we want to see them in line. We want them in the discussion. We don't want people having to download, you know, attachments and then open the attachment in a separate window. That is totally inefficient and not a good workflow. So you really need to pay attention to this one. We do not want attachments. We want images inserted. So watch that video. Um, and then down here, uh, we are going to be taking proctored exams and you're going to have to upload your written work. Your grade is based on written work for an exam. It's not based on getting a correct answer. It's based on your written work, the supporting work. And uh, this is an app that turns your phone into a scanner and it will scan as many pages as you want into a PDF. Super slick, super easy. Um, so that's what that video shows you. And Brightspace Pulse is an app on your phone that you can use to see D2L. It's a really decent app. So it's a good way to do email through your phone versus logging into a browser and going to frontrange.edu and opening up D2L in a web browser. This Brightspace Pulse app is an excellent interface. Um, now, what you'll have to do is choose an account. Our account is Community College System. So these courses through Front Range, through my courses, are under the umbrella of the Colorado Community College system. So that's the account you would choose. Uh, last year, before we went to my courses, you would just choose the Front Range Community College account. But now you will want to choose the Colorado Community College system account. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty, pretty nice interface. So this combination video shows you how you could uh, use your phone as a scanner, scan your exam into a PDF, and then use the Brightspace Pulse app to bump it up to uh, D2L. And you will be bumping those into the assignment tool. So photos of your exam work go right into these folders here. Um, all right. So that's what those other two videos are, embedding photo embedding images into discussions, not attaching them, embedding, and then creating a single uh, file of your work. Now, if you have an iPhone, there is the Note app in the iPhone that also has a built-in scanner. So you don't have to use Cam Scanner, but one way or another, you need to use your phone to scan your documents into a PDF. Uh, and you, again, one image, not eight pages, not eight separate images. If you have eight pages of work, one file where you have each of your pages, you know, in a bigger PDF. So PDF format, one file. And of course, there's a practice area. You can practice and try as many times as you need until you understand it. If you have questions, of course, come up here, email me, let me know, um, and I can help you. Okay, let's go back to content and uh, let's see, we've gone through all that stuff. Uh, the last thing here is written exam information. So this is going to give you a study guide and an answer key for each of the exams that you'll be taking. So under exam two, there'll be a study guide that this is gonna be hidden. This was the exam I just gave in the fall. It, it's an answer key for the exam that I gave in the fall. So these are gonna be taken away. Those won't be available to you, but you'll have a study guide and an answer key for each of the exams. All right, well, that's it for now. Um, well, one more thing, quizzes. 
Quizzes is where, this is where you are going to see the exam. So we use a proctoring service called HonorLock, and you will see exam one with HonorLock at home. You might see exam one with HonorLock at a testing center, depending on whether you're going to use a testing center or test from home, um, either way. There's a couple of quizzes up here that are prerequisites. Every student needs to take this quiz. It's just kind of an overview of the testing policies. And then if you are going to test from home, this quiz here gives you kind of an overview of what it means to test at home. These you can take as many times as you need. Uh, most folks just need to take each one of them once. If you're going to test in the testing center, you would just take this one. But once again, email me if you have any questions. If you have any questions at all, any confusion, let me know. All right, well, welcome to spring 2023. Good luck.